Hi everyone, welcome back to another installment of Makeup and Musings here on my channel. Today's version of this kind of series I've got going is going to be a little different than usual. So normally these Makeup and Musings videos are a chance for me to kind of touch on hot topics in the makeup industry while I'm putting on my makeup. Or sometimes they are also more like chit chat, get ready with me style videos where I talk about things I'm thankful for in my life. For example, that's the one that went up on Thanksgiving this past year. So today is going to be a little different than that because I am actually looping back to a concept that I talked about during my full makeup collection declutter. So I'll link that up in the corner if you want to watch that declutter but this is a follow-up to that video because I'm going to be trying out all of the products that were on the chopping block for me during that declutter. So I had pretty close to like a full face of products that I was very on the fence about. I either don't love the product for a certain reason or I feel like I haven't quite given it enough of a chance yet to make a final decision on whether I wanted to declutter it or not. So I'm using this video today as a last chance to apply them on camera, give you my final thoughts and make a decision on whether or not they're staying in my collection. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the first thing that was on the chopping block from that declutter video is this L'Oreal Visible Lift Luminous Serum Tint. And I have the shade 802 Rose and it's essentially just like a glowy primer sort of product. So you can see there on my finger, it reflects the light quite a bit. And I've always just applied this with my fingers um, and that works well. It's not like it has any textural problems for me. For me, it's more so trying to think through whether or not it makes sense to keep this like non cruelty free version of a product like this in my collection when there are so many cruelty free alternatives to this now on the market. I would say the biggest negative to this one that I kind of anticipated that this would do it and it doesn't is it doesn't mix well into my foundations. So it goes down great as a base and if I let it dry down it it's totally fine doesn't bother my foundation. But if I try to mix it in with a foundation to try to have more of that like radiant finish in the foundation itself, it doesn't work out for me hardly ever. It kind of breaks up my foundation in weird ways and makes foundations that are typically foolproof for me uh, a little bit patchy and inconsistent. So I do feel like that limits kind of the usability or versatility of this product and I feel like there has to be something else on the market that would do that in a better way and also be cruelty free. Next up is the Range Beauty True Intentions Hydrating Foundation and I have two shades. I have the shade Paloma and I have the shade Coconut Milk and Coconut Milk is just a little too deep for me right now so I am going to mix them just a little bit so that I can lighten things up with Paloma. So here's my little mixture. Hopefully that's pretty close to my skin tone and this does oxidize just a little bit, which isn't a deal breaker to me at all, um, but just a heads up to anyone who might purchase this and also if it looks a little light right now, hopefully it'll deepen up on my skin. So every time I've used this, it's very like patchy across my skin to the point where I truly like don't enjoy wearing it or putting it on, even though if I can get it blended out well, I think it's beautiful at the end. And it does not work for me at all with a damp sponge. I've had a little bit of success with it with my fingers. And then the best has been using some sort of more dense brush. For example, like my e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush here, using something a little more dense has been uh, successful for me in the past. But I still feel like it kind of catches and picks up on itself pretty weird if I'm not extremely, extremely careful. And then the brush leaves it just a little streaky and because the damp sponge really picks it up off my face and makes it patchy, it's like impossible for me to get those uh, lines and streaks out. So I've always tried to put a little bit more product on my face than this. I've never gone kind of quite that light-handed with it. And that's partially because 
yes, I understand it's a light coverage product, but I still need enough on my face to spread it across all of my skin, right? So like I can tell right here, there's no makeup. Like if I feel it, there's, there's no foundation there. And I can also just tell like this little gap got missed because I didn't have enough to spread over all of my skin. And and same with like you can tell right here between my brows there's just absolutely nothing there i'm okay with a light coverage product i love light coverage but i still need it to spread evenly across my face and so every time i've used this that's kind of the problem i end up running into so i'm gonna try to just add some in those spots where i feel like i just got no coverage at all and we'll see how it goes So after adding that little bit and buffing it in, you can kind of start to see what I'm talking about here. Like for example, this, this area of my forehead, like you can see there's good coverage here and then there's very patchy areas all kind of through the whole part of my forehead where I've now blended the brush back over where there was already product. So definitely not buildable, I'd say. Even if you can get kind of that initial layer to look good, it still is definitely not gonna be one that you're gonna wanna like ever build up or even like accidentally brush back over portions of your face where you already have product. Okay, I picked just a tiny bit up on like the edge of my brush and I'm gonna see if I like more so just pat straight on rather than like swiping. I think that worked better. I mean, I kind of covered up that patchy area there, but I feel like now I created a patchy area down here. I don't know. I just, this foundation is a frustrating one for me. And if I have to do kind of this much babying and hand holding to get it to even perform at like a minimum level of acceptability, I just don't know if it really has a place in my collection because I'll never reach for it over products that work really well for me every time. This is also a chopping block item. This is the Koki Be Bright Illuminating Concealer and I have the shade Light. And I do kind of think that the light shade of this contributes to the things I don't love about it. So I feel like it just does not have enough coverage for me under my eyes. And I'm definitely not like a full coverage concealer kind of person. I'm okay with a little bit of the darkness under my eyes showing through. So really I want something that's hydrating and just helps kind of even out my skin tone a little bit. And because this is an illuminating product, I was really hoping it would do that for me. But I just feel like after I blend it out, there's like literally nothing there. And so I've been having a little trouble with it. But now that I'm paler and it's winter time, I am going to give it another shot in this video. And I'm also going to try using it in conjunction with my LA Girl Pro Conceal because I love using this peachy corrector and mixing it like 50-50 with a concealer. So I'm gonna do one side with the Koki concealer alone and then I'm gonna do one side with it mixed with this peach corrector and see if maybe I like it that way because then it would totally be worth keeping in my collection because that's one of my favorite things to do with concealer is mix it with this product. So side one here, I'm going to just go in with the Koki concealer and I'm just gonna apply it how I would any other concealer because I don't necessarily think I have an issue with like the formula itself. I think it's possible that it's just like not the product for my preferences. So I'm gonna let it sit for a second because it's a very thin kind of liquidy consistency on this concealer and I wanna give it a chance to kind of really set to improve that coverage a bit. So while I do that, I'm gonna mix up my little concoction for my other eye. So I usually do a ratio somewhere like that for this, this trick of mixing it with the peach corrector. And then I just mix it with my finger and again, place it in those parts of my eye where I want coverage. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend this side out with my brush and I'll do a sponge on the other one just so that we can compare a little bit. So it's still a little light for me even now in the winter time, I think. 
but that's not the fault of the product that's my own fault and this is part of my frustration with this is that i think if i had the right color that maybe it would cover up a little bit more under my eyes and i maybe wouldn't have these same feelings about this concealer at all so that's the coverage level with just one layer of the koki concealer all on its own and then i'm going to take a slightly damp sponge on my other eye just to see how that goes so you can see that it actually almost looks like i got more coverage out of the koki alone so i'm going to go in with my brush with just that little bit of peach corrector from the back of my hand and see if I can build that up on this side at all. Okay, so that's giving me a little bit more of the look that I would be going for. You can see this is just a little too light and I know a lot of people love kind of that bright under eye and I don't mind it, but I think the contrast here is just like a little bit too much for me. So I'm gonna even it out with a little bit of this peach that I have left just in kind of the deepest uh, part of my socket to see how that goes. Okay, I'm shocked that I'm this happy with how this side looks. So I actually think I'm gonna add just a little bit of the concealer alone to this side because I think that's actually looking pretty nice after I packed on a little extra with the brush. This is by far the best kind of outcome that I've ever gotten with this concealer. But I'm also wondering if I'm thinking that the coverage level is a little bit higher because my foundation today is so, so, so light coverage. So I'll be going through like all of these products at the end of this video and letting you know if I'm keeping them or decluttering them. But I'll just say now this one might be worth a little more testing before I do let it go. Moving right along to the next chopping block item. This is the NYX HD Finishing Powder and I just have the translucent version so you can see it just looks like a plain white powder. And this is the first face powder I ever bought. I never used to set my makeup down and then I started to notice that my concealer would never stay in place and so I started powdering kind of just that part of my face. And that's generally still what I do unless it's like summertime and I know I'm gonna be sweating a lot or something like that. So all I'm gonna do with it today is set that area and then I think I'm gonna set this area where the foundation is having a little trouble as well. And if you saw my declutter video where I kind of talk about uh, why these items are on the chopping block, this one wasn't necessarily like for any reason in particular other than I have more powders in my collection than I could ever like imagine going through. And this one's the oldest and therefore the closest to expiring. And it's also a translucent pressed powder, which is just generally not what I reach for most often. So it's kind of just fell by the wayside and it might be time for it to go just because I have other things I prefer in my collection at this point. So you can see I powdered this eye while I was talking and this one has none yet. So it does bring down kind of that shine and reflection that can emphasize the hollow of your eyes. So it did that, but it didn't, you know, add anything spectacular or <laughs> um, like make a significant impact or difference. And that's the thing is the other powders I own at this point do make a significant difference. Like I side by side, they look drastically different on my skin. And then again, just kind of doing this central part of my forehead where I feel like things didn't go super well. So that's this powder. It's just a translucent powder. Next up is a product that's breaking my heart to be putting this on the chopping block, and that is the Nabla Skin Bronzing in the shade Ambra. And this is such a gorgeous, gorgeous bronzer shade. I love the tone of it, but I'll link up in the corner my first impressions of this bronzer, and those first impressions still hold. It is like impossible to pick this up on your brush, and it takes me forever to build this up, and I just get frustrated with it and it takes so 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 long to build up and it's very disorienting to use it and because I don't enjoy the process of using it I'm less likely to reach for it than my other bronzers. 
But I will say that most of my other bronzers, I use this very old e.l.f. Uh, like tapered bronzing brush just because it's perfect for my specific face shape and it's like the perfect amount of density. So like I like a nice fluffy loose bronzer brush and that's what I've always tried to use with this bronzer. But today I'm going to use this new brush that I got from Prados Beauty and although it looks like it would be also very floofy um, and kind of loose, it's a little bit more densely packed. And so it's not a shape that I usually use for bronzer, but I'm going to try it out because I want to give this its fair shot and maybe it just needs a much stiffer brush than I'm used to using. So I'm just kind of swirling my brush in there and I don't know if you can quite tell, but to me it just looks like there's like no product on there. Like if I swirled my brush this much in any other bronzer, it'd be completely coated to the point where I, there's no way I could put it on my face. So I guess that's what I mean when I say like it feels like no product is coming off and it takes a really long time to build up. So let's go ahead and try it with this brush and see how things go. Oh, that was pretty good. That was actually, I feel like I see the product already. Usually I have to go in like three or four times before I even see like any outcome at all. But I think there's a clear difference. This side has no bronzer and this side has bronzer. Okay, so now I feel less certain that it's building up as quickly as I thought because now if you look at my forehead, like this side has bronzer and this side doesn't and I mean, they look the same to me and that was two layers already of the bronzer. So oh, I was hopeful with the cheeks, but hmm. The thing that frustrates me is I love how that looks on my cheeks. I think it looks like the actual color that my skin turns when I'm in the sun. And so I, I really am hesitant to part ways with this just because I know that shade is like spot on for me. Maybe it needs an even less dense brush. Like, is it crazy to think it might need just something like even more diffuse? Maybe I'll try that next if I decide to keep it. Next up on the chopping block is the Milani Rose Powder Blush in the shade Flowers of Love. So they have a couple of these little like trio blush shades and I bought this so, so long ago. I, I don't even know if they sell them anymore. I'll have to look it up when I'm kind of linking things down below. But I hate this shade so much. It just looks like powder on my skin, like thick, thick, thick powder with glitter in it. I really don't, this one doesn't do it for me, but I hold on to this primarily because of this center shade. I don't really have any other blushes that are this sort of like more cool toned pink. Most of the rest of my blush collection leans very like earthy tones or very like peachy. And so this is super unique. This one's a little less unique because it is kind of that like ruddier shade, uh, but this middle one is definitely unique to my collection. So I want to put it on today and see if I still love it as much as I thought I do. It's definitely like a spring blush for me and I'm hoping for spring soon here. So I think this will get me in the mood. So I'm just going to dip into that center shade here and it's pretty pale. So I usually load up my brush quite a bit with it before I start applying. This is all coming together to be a really beautiful like lightweight springtime makeup look and I'm kind of liking it considering these are all the products I was really unsure if I was keeping. <laughs> so I do really like this shade. It is even lighter than I kind of remembered. Um, I'm definitely at my fairest of the year right now and I kind of thought I used to think it was a little more impactful than this but Maybe I just used to usually mix it kind of with that slightly deeper one. I do like this blush. I am kind of wondering if maybe I need to just incorporate a different new kind of light pink cool toned blush into my collection to kind of scratch this itch, but be able to kind of get rid of this big clunky packaging and two shades that I kind of feel like are unnecessary in my collection. 
So we'll see. I think it looks nice. The next thing up here on the chopping block is actually an eyeshadow palette. So this is the Milani Pure Passion eyeshadow palette. And I love this palette in general. It's actually the first palette I bought that was not just like strictly neutral toned browns. So I bought it mostly for like this lower half here of kind of these nice warm berry shades. But since buying this a few years back, I've actually purchased many other palettes that have kind of these really gorgeous rich tones in formulas that I think I like either as well or better than this formula from Milani. All of these shades up here are just dupes in my own collection, so I really only needed this palette for this bottom half anyways. So now that I kind of feel like this bottom half is redundant in my collection as well, I'm just not sure there's a place for this for me anymore. And I would say the palette that really made me realize that that bottom half was redundant in my collection now was the e.l.f. Berry Bad little mini bite-sized quad. And so for this portion of this kind of chopping block video, I'm actually gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison where I use the e.l.f. on one side and the Milani on the other side so I can really make sure that I do have these shades that I love from Milani in this small compact formula from e.l.f. So let's go ahead and start and I'll kind of uh, point to the shades in the different palettes so that you can see what I'm directly comparing. So I'm doing the e.l.f. one on this eye over here and I'm gonna go in with this lightest shade here and just put that in my crease. Okay, ironically, as soon as I put down the e.l.f. eyeshadow palette, I picked up the Milani so I could use the big mirror. So there's one point for the Milani. Just going in with a quick second layer. So just really nice subtle definition. This shade is super flattering on my eyes, so it's a great like everyday color for me. And I think I can get essentially the same tone by mixing the pink and the brown in the Milani. So I'm gonna try that on this eye. So it's coming out a little deeper, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and mix in this uh, nice light shade as well here. And you might be thinking, like Morgan, if you have to do this much work to make them like look the same, then they're not dupes and you should keep the Milani. But the bottom line is, I like the color of the e.l.f. one better than I like the shades in the Milani palette on their own or mixed together like this. So if it really comes down to it, I would rather just have the one shade in the e.l.f. palette that I really, really love than I would have even these three separate shades that I don't like on their own or mixed. <laughs> so I'm taking a slightly fluffier brush just to blend a little bit more of this light shade in. Okay, so I think we're essentially there. Um, this one's definitely just still a little bit peachier toned, but ultimately both of these palettes have a transition shade for my crease. So I'm gonna do a shimmer shade next and then I'll deepen out that outer corner with the other matte at the very end. And I really want to use this more like really truly berry shade because I think it's the one that's a little more unique in my collection. I definitely have this shade a thousand times over in almost all of my neutral palettes. So I'm gonna put this all over the lid and both of these formulas I like with my finger best. So that's just how I'm gonna apply both palettes today. This e.l.f. formula is just such a beautiful like satiny shimmer. It really feels much nicer than, you know, a $3 palette. And then the shadow in Milani that matches that one pretty much perfectly is this one over here. Okay, so I'm not sure how much it picks up on camera, but the e.l.f. is definitely more of like a shimmery satin, whereas the Milani is definitely a little bit more reflective. And both of those are good for different reasons. So like the e.l.f. is gonna be really smoothing on more mature or creased eyelids. And the Milani is just gonna be that more impactful oomph all at once. So kind of depends on your preferences there. I think they both look beautiful and I definitely have plenty of other 
uh, shades similar to this in other palettes. For example, I have a Juvia's Place sh shimmer that's really, really similar to this tone that gives me more of this look. So again, even if it's not identical to the e.l.f., it's identical to something. And then just for um, the sake of this video, I'll swatch this one next to its counterpart in Milani, just so that you can, um, which is this one here, just so you can kind of see how those two shades compare. Okay, so the Milani's on the top and the e.l.f. is on the bottom. And in this case, they're both more of that like satiny finish. And honestly, actually, the e.l.f. looks a little bit more impactful than the Milani. So kind of just the opposite of what the situation is with this berry tone. On that outer corner to wrap up the look, I'm going to use this matte here just to deepen things slightly. I hope you can see how impactful that is. I barely picked any up on my brush from that e.l.f. palette and man, did I get a lot of payoff arguably too much. I'm going to have to blend that out a little bit. I'm going to take a tiny bit of it underneath my eye. And then I'm going back to that brush I used with kind of the first sh crease shade just to blend the edges a little bit on that because that was more impactful than I remembered that shade being. And I don't have another brush shaped quite like this one, so I just wiped this one off super well. And now I'm going to use that same brush on my other eye. And this is the counterpart in the Milani shadow. So the Milani definitely needs a lot more building. Um, that's for sure. I can already tell. And I'm going to dip into just this one slightly because um, it's just not quite as deep as the e.l.f. one. And I want to get about the same depth for comparison purposes. I can say right off the bat that the tone of the e.l.f. one is more flattering on my particular eyes. This is a little bit more brown based and this is definitely more like purpley berry based and uh, that shows as I start to blend this out. And that's totally going to depend on your preferences uh, for eyeshadow, but if I'm going for a colored eyeshadow, I typically like that the base of that eyeshadow is also colored. <laughs> When I blended the Milani side, a lot of it blended away, so I'm just adding a little bit more back. I'm just having a lot of trouble blending this side. I feel like every time I blend, it's just getting like a little bit patchy and weird, so I'm going to leave it where it is so I don't drive myself crazy. And we will loop back to this, of course, and my thoughts on this comparison at the end. I'm going to do brows and mascara off camera, and I'll be back to finish up with lips. Okay, last up here is lips. And in that declutter video that kind of inspired this video, I talked about two different lipsticks that I was kind of on the fence about. And the first one was the uh, Medieval Lipstick from Lipstick Queen. And this is a really beautiful, like, sheer red shade. And I don't always reach for sheer reds, but when I want one for a certain look, it's kind of like the only thing that will do. So I'm gonna swatch this because I think I found something else in my collection that will work just as well as this. And let me let this one go, and then we can talk about the other lipstick and apply it for this video. So the thing I found in my collection that's really similar is the Salt New York Cream Tint Pro in the shade Cranberry which is a really beautiful, like rich red. So I'm just gonna swatch that here next to Medieval on my hand and talk about the differences a little bit. Okay, so here's Medieval and here is the Cream Tint Pro from Salt New York in Cranberry. And there are differences. The Salt New York definitely is more of a matte finish, especially when I put it on my lips. And the medieval is more of this like very sheeny finish but you can see they're both pretty much the same tone i mean close enough that when they're on my lips in a sheer way i'm probably not going to know the difference and i prefer the formula of the salt new york first of all it's a lip and cheek product so i can use it in multiple ways which i always love second because it's a little bit more matte it does stay on my lips quite a bit longer and it doesn't really stray outside the lines which is kind of like my biggest fear with a brighter 
like slick shade like this. So I really think it's time for me to just get rid of Medieval because I would rather hold on to my Salt New York products. So that brings us to the other chopping block lip product that I mentioned, and that's the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in the shade Dance Fever. And this is just a really unique shade. I just don't have anything else like this in my collection. It's like a brown, mauve, purpley undertone, really gorgeous like mid-tone shade and I just don't have anything else even remotely similar and so I was really hesitant to get rid of it just because it is so unique to my collection and again kind of like what I said with the medieval shade like that sheer red it's like well when you want this shade like nothing else will do and so I had a really hard time deciding whether or not I want to let go of this and I think the thing that could potentially put me over the edge on this is whether or not I'm able to find a dupe in a cruelty free formula. So I'm going to put it on now just to remind myself how much I love this shade even though I'm not sure it totally goes with this makeup look here and then I'm gonna talk about a shade that I think might be similar enough that I could order it and see how they compare. I'm just using my Because Duh lip liner from um, Essence. All the other makeup on my face that I didn't talk through today will be linked down below as well. So as suspected, it looks a little off with this makeup look, but you can kind of get a sense of the, the shade and the finish of this product now that it's on my lips. So ironically, it seemed actually kind of similar to my lip liner color, which I've never noticed before. So let me swatch that. Okay, so this one in the middle is the NARS. This over here is the Tea Time lip liner from Essence. I'd say it's way too pink to be similar. And then this one on the top is NYX Nude Beige, the, the lip liner. But then here is the lip liner I used today. And that is Because Duh from Essence. And honestly, they're so similar. I mean, like, there's very little difference between those two. I'd say the essence is just a little bit lighter in tone, but I definitely did not anticipate <laughs> this turn of events here in this video. Okay, I built up the essence lip liner a little bit more and really they're so, so similar. I mean, this doesn't have quite the same matte finish, but I'm not really a matte lip person anyway. Like, I like this, but um, especially with this shade, it's not the most like, Ba -ba boom shade and so then to have it in kind of a dull finish kind of doesn't do it for me so I may get rid of this I think those are so similar the other thing I was gonna say that I might be able to purchase that would be a dupe for this um, but in a nice satin formula that I love is a brand called Propa Beauty. And I've never tried their products, but I've been dying to buy one of their lipsticks and the shade Closer really looks similar. So I'll pop one on the screen just so you can kind of see a comparison of lip swatches. Um, so for now, I think I'll probably stick with this because the lip liner, use that to fill in my whole lips if I want this effect but I also still really want to try Proper Beauty, so uh, I may consider that in the future as well. Okay, and a quick wrap up here for the final declutter of what I'm keeping versus not keeping for these products. I'm going to hold on to this L'Oreal Visible Lift. I'm going to try mixing it in with a couple other foundations that I own just to see how I feel. I think it is officially time to say goodbye to these Range Beauty foundations. I've never been happy with the results. Today, I'm not super happy with the outcome. I think it looks okay on camera, but I can especially see up close that I will just never wear this because I don't like it how it looks in person. The Koki Concealer gets a second life because I am actually sort of impressed by the coverage level today and I want to keep testing out how it works with this peach corrector. The NYX Finishing Powder, I think it's time for this to go just because it's the oldest powder in my collection. I don't love it for any particular reason and I think I know some family members who might be interested in a product like this. The Nabla Bronzer gets to stay. 
I just can't make myself get rid of this yet. I love the color on my skin and so I just think I need to find the right brush to use with this bronzer. The Milani Rose Blush also gets to very temporarily stay. As soon as I find a different cool toned blush that I like, I am going to go ahead and declutter this. But in the meantime, just in case I'm really craving these very light ethereal spring vibes, I want to keep it at least for the spring season. The Milani Pure Passion Palette. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this. I don't love the formula of this top row. This second row is all matte shades that I wish were just, you know, this matte from e.l.f. <laughs> and then the bottom two rows really are duplicated within this little bite-sized quad. So I don't wanna keep the large palette around when I know I'm more likely to reach for the small one anyway. The Lipstick Queen Medieval shade gets decluttered because I have that Salt New York alternative. And my NARS Matte Lip Pencil in Dance Fever. I really thought this was gonna hang on if anything did in this video, but because I found out that it was essential the same color as a lip liner that I love, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of it now. It's not cruelty free, so it'll be good to kind of clear that out of my collection. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed this today. Let me know down in the comments below if you like this style of video of these kind of like last chance or chopping block sorts of videos, because I feel like every time I do a declutter, there are those items that I'm just on the fence about, and then I forget to loop back around to them and make a final decision. So I think this style video could really help me kind of keep on top of those things I'm uncertain on. Thank you so, so much for watching today. I would love if you would consider subscribing to my channel before you go, as well as giving this video a thumbs up and commenting as well if you enjoyed it. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.